Now this is a bit sort of, uh, it's called Sonnet for Dumfries House in Autumn. I'm trying to be a bit clever with my rhyme schemes. A willful feeling and a sense that ruse can scant repair the promise of the beauty there. A winter sky so immense that spring is but a footstep hence along the banks of Lone Nugar. Our two souls softly wander, it's but a sinner's recompense. The leaves cascade down, a filigree of gold and red, and in my reverie a crown for a king in waiting's head, the beauty of the world to be beside the woods of Ochiltree. Thank you. Dreadfully, the king did send me a little note when I left a copy of Philip at the Free House, which I shouldn't have done, but he was very kind. <laughs> Said he had enjoyed it. Uh, my, uh, another attempt at a sonnet in lighter mood. It's called Sonnet on First Cooking a Razor Clam. I wonder who was most afraid. The mollusk or the novice cook, shivering in his kitchen nook. Not the fisher, it's his trade. The strange creature has a head, not with eyes or usual look, but movement showing life. We took to be a chance for solitude. Tied together with a string, we now know why they do this so they can't hear the kettle sing, so we can hide our distress. But my smile must make it plain, its little life was not in vain. <laughs> <laughs> to finish off a little uh, vignette, vignette <laughs> um, from the lockdown, it's called Bacchus Bell. She slips out from the local store along the pavement's promenade. A lady of uncertain year, but with the limp it could be more. Normally she would hide her cash, a shopping bag or portmanteau, but with the virus and all that, the Chardonnay was all unsure. A bottle grasped in either hand, a little stagger here and there, homeward, lonely, but inclined the twitching curtains to ignore. The double ration seemed absurd, but how were we to know if she was single or were two to gurgle down the vinous poop? <laughs>